The concept of integrating rates of change uh, can be taken out of context and uh, be generalized to regular functions, just f of x with uh, graphs and just outside of the context of a word problem. Uh, one such example is this. They give you information about the derivative, okay, f prime of x is this, and they tell you an initial value of f, and they want to know what f of 3 is. So one way of solving this is to treat it like an initial value problem, uh, but, and you could simply integrate this, and when you get the constant of integration, you could use this to figure that out, so you get what f a actually is, and then you would plug 3 in into that. But that's not the point of this. What I want, I want to kind of look at this through um, what happens when you integrate a rate of change. So uh, here's the graph of f prime. All right, it goes like so. They told you that f of zero is two, and they want to know what f of three is. Judging from the graph, you would expect f of three to be greater than f of zero, right? Because, well, to get f of three, it, you're going to add to two the accumulated change that f undergoes from zero to three. So from zero to one half, Here's the graph. F undergoes a negative change. And then from 1 half to 3, it undergoes a positive change. It appears that this positive change is much more than this thing was negative. So uh, to figure it out, you would say that, oh, I think I have it over here. Yeah. Uh, the final value, which is f of 3, equals the initial value, which is f of 0, plus the change, which is the integral from 0 to 3 of the derivative that they gave you, 2x squared minus x. So you work this out, right? And if you take this over to the other side, you just get the result that you got from the fundamental theorem of calculus, the antiderivative of this function, evaluated and subtracted at the endpoints. Let's go ahead and work this out. You get f of 3, which we don't know, is going to equal f of 0, which is 2, Plus, then you have to integrate this, which is what you get, 2 thirds x cubed minus 1 half x squared. And you uh, do that from 0 to 3. When you plug in 3, you get 2 plus, what do you get? 3 cubed is 27, divided by 3 is 9, times 2 is uh, 18 minus uh, 9 halves. And 18 minus, uh, 18 minus 9 halves, well 18 is like 36 halves. Minus 9 halves is 25 halves, so this is 13.5, uh, which says that, all right, from t equals 0 to t equals 3, or from x is 0 to x is 3, um, because this was the rate of change of f, f underwent a total change in 13, of 13.5. When you add that to the original, you get the final value of 15.5. Uh, one way that this kind of question can be disguised is to... Um, give it to you in graphical form. For example here, all right? They give you an initial value of some unknown function f. f of zero is two, and they want to know what is f of two and what is f of, of five? Given the graph of f prime, and it's from this graph that you have to make the deductions here. I have um, two is this area here, and four is this area here, with the two and five on, on the axis. So you just have to assemble this in the uh, final equals initial plus change e equation. f of 2 is going to equal uh, f of 0 plus the integral of f prime uh, from 0 to 2. And you get this by reading it right off of the chart. The integral from 0 to 2 is the area. That's going to be 2, which says that f undergoes a total change of 2 from here to here. And so the final value is going to be 2 plus 2 is 4. And similarly for f of 5. Um, f of 5 is going to be, now, we can either start at 0, which we did here, or we could, because we figured out the answer for uh, f of 2, we could just as easily start there. So I'm going to say that f of 5 equals f of 2, I'm going to start at 2 instead of at 0, plus the integral from 2 to 5 of f prime of x dx. So f of 2, we had already figured out that's 4, plus, and then you look at this, the integral from 2 to 5 is negative 4, so that means f undergoes a change of negative 4 from 2 to 5, so you get 4 plus minus 4, and it 
appears at f of 5 falls back down to 0.